Now today we are going to discuss clinical medicine. What is clinical medicine? It's very important for the students who are entering from the preclinical classes into clinical classes. The preclinical stuff is usually the anatomy, the histology, the physiology, the biochemistry. Some of them have pharmacology, the uh, pathology. But uh, when we come into the clinical medicine, we actually uh, go into a different uh, area of medical education. Clinical medicine is basically dealt in the hospital or clinical side of the uh, medical complex. The medical complex or the teaching medical complex consists of a medical college or a medical school and an allied hospital where the cl clinical training is important. So clinical medicine is practiced on the clinical side. Now there is slight difference because when we come into the clinical side, we have in mind the physiological or pathological definitions. The definitions are different on the clinical sides and uh, we proceed in a different way in uh, the clinical side. Now, when we go to the clinical side, what is the first thing is the health. Now, what is health? Health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. That is a complete state of mental, physical and social well-being. It's not just the absence of disease or infirmity, that the disease and infirmity should be absent, but there should be uh, well-being, there should be a complete well-being. The patient should feel normal and patient will should not feel ill even mentally or socially. And you see these individuals generally have the ability to maintain their uh, internal milieu, that is the homeostasis inside is maintained and they can recover from various type of uh, insults and then if this is health then what is disease now disease is a harmful uh, deviation from the normal physical or uh, uh, functional or structural functioning of an organism this is different from uh, the injuries the physical injuries they are different a disease is a state of abnormal structural or functional uh, performance of an individual and this is usually associated with certain sign of symptoms and signs. Symptoms are the uh, patient's physical problems, the complaints, whatever complaints the patient generates or the patient tells you they are called symptoms and what a physician or a surgeon examines the patient and find abnormalities these are called signs so the patient has symptoms and signs and you see this is different from physical injuries now what is a healthcare system the healthcare system is basically composed of three main components the one of the most important and the vip of the healthcare system is the patient the most important of the healthcare delivery system so we call this as vip of the healthcare delivery system and then you got healthcare establishments and then you got healthcare uh, individuals who provide this health. Now what is this healthcare establishment? Healthcare, healthcare establishment is actually a place where patient gets advice about the patient's health and it has more different components. It, it may have inpatients that where patients are admitted. It may have outpatients. Outpatient establishment is where patients are seen and they are disposed of uh, with certain advices. And then you've got an emergency department. The healthcare establishments, which usually have inpatient services, they also have outpatient services and emergency services. Some of the healthcare establishments are only meant for outpatient services. They don't have an emergency service or uh, an indoor service. But the healthcare establishments, which have indoor services, they usually have outpatient services and emergency services as well. And then you've got healthcare providers. Now, who are these healthcare providers? These are different group of people which are involved in the healthcare delivery uh, system. Now, these are the medics, that is the medical staff, which provides the direct uh, services or the medical services to the patients. For example, physicians, surgeons, or gynecologists, or a pediatricians. So this is medical staff and then you've got a paramedical staff we can call it a support staff which helps in uh, making uh, the diagnosis and the treatment of the patient for example uh, uh, the radiologist may or the radio radiological technician may help the physician conduct different type of radiological investigation and a staff nurse or a pharmacist may provide uh, the physicians about the dispensing or disbursements of the medicine. So these are called paramedical staff or the support staff. 
and then you have got policy makers policy makers can be at the government level which decide the overall policy that is going to prevail in the community and then you've got policy maker which may be uh, related to a particular institution that they will decide how this institution is going to function and then you've got the administrators Admitter, administrators are different type of staffs which includes uh, the admin staff the human resource management the financial management the purchase department which provides you different uh, uh, requirements for example drugs or surgical instruments which are required or surgical disposable items which are required so these are purchase department and then you've got maintenance and repair section so you've got multiple section in the administrative staff which are required for the smooth running of the hospital so you've got different staff which have got different function and you must know about it because uh, when you go into the hospitals you are confused that uh, what is the responsibility of what person so you must know basically what different type of staff is available for example they may also be an it department and if you have a problem you may have to see that uh, information technology department so these are different administrative or managerial staff which are present in the healthcare establishments uh, and then what are the objectives objective is first thing is that these healthcare services provide you disease prevention the most important tool for disease prevention is the education of the patients this is generally done at the government level or at the community levels the patients are educated about uh, different type of uh, steps which they can take to prevent the disease from occurring for example one of the step is that is we ask the patient to control his or her weight so that can prevent multiple disease from coming too soon for example diabetes or hypertension or heart disease similarly uh, the lung cancer can be prevented by educating the people that they should not smoke or they should quit smoking so this is very important uh, strategy which is one part of the healthcare delivery systems in almost all communities that they resort to preventive measures so best preventive measure is the education of the patient and then you got these policies which are generally make at the government or uh, individual levels which i already told you that they can be decided by the government or by the institution uh, and then we got another preventive measure which is vaccination vaccination is when you uh, vaccinate an individual it means you are going to produce a sort of defense in that individual against certain diseases these diseases are generally infectious diseases and then we got the second objective is if the patient gets sick preventive medicine is that you prevent the patient from becoming sick so you try to keep the patient healthy and if the patient becomes sick the second objective is that you make a diagnosis that what this patient is suffering from the diagnosis initially is at the anatomical level that is what organ system is involved patient has got problem in the liver or in the heart or in the kidneys or in the lungs or in the bones or in the gi tract so you make an anatomical diagnosis and then after this you make an etiological diagnosis and etiological diagnosis is that is what is the cause of the disease for example if the patient has a liver disease then you find out what is the cause of liver disease so the presence of liver disease mean the patient you have made an anatomical diagnosis that the liver is involved and then you make an etiological diagnosis etiological diagnosis is that this liver disease is called for example by chronic alcoholism or chronic hepatitis c so that is called etiological diagnosis and then the third objective is you manage if the patient is sick so management can be curative for example if the patient has got pneumonia you treat the pneumonia and the pneumonia is cured and then you've got palliative treatment the palliative treatment is that you provide a treatment which improves the patient's quality of life the disease is not cured but the patient's quality of life becomes better the disease is manageable for example you control the blood pressure you control the diabetes the patient does not have the ill feelings because of diabetes and similarly if the patient has for example uh, an advanced stage cancer and you cannot treat that cancer you do some sort of a procedure which can help the patient quality of life to improve for example if problem is in the esophagus patient cannot eat you provide a palliative care for example you make a hole in the abdominal wall you call it a gastrostomy or jejunostomy and you feed the patient through that uh, opening so this is called palliative treatment 
and then you can have rehabilitative treatment rehabilitative treatment is that if the patient has suffered from a permanent damage from a disease then you provide the patient treatment which can help the patient to overcome that disability which is produced by the disease for example if there is a limb which has been uh, lost you can provide an artificial limb so this is rehabilitative treatment so the patient can be provided different type of treatments then how do you make a diagnosis diagnosis is by data acquisition you acquire the patient's medical data how do you acquire that data you see the classically we go the first step is the history taking in the history we see in the patients how the patients complaints have developed and we uh, through a systematic approach try to analyze what is the possible cause of this patient's illness and then the next step is physical examination after you have taken the history of the patient then you go for a physical examination and you see if there are any signs or telltale marks of the disease present you note down and then you can do certain diagnostic procedures for example you can take a fluid if it is present in the peritoneum and send it for analysis or you can do a pulmonary function testing you can do different type of bedside procedures to find out what is the possible uh, cause of this patient's disease when you've got through this you can go for investigations so you can take the help of different type of investigations now what different type of investigations we can have we can have body specimen analysis for example we can analyze the blood we can see the urine we can see body tissues so we can go for different type of analysis so multiple tests can be done on blood they can be done on body tissues they can be done on body fluids so we examine uh, these in a different uh, way and according to the needs of the patients how we determine the need it is actually by the patient's history physical examination and if any bedside procedure if, if you have done that and then the second way of investigating is that we image the patients the how can we image the patient you see we can have electrical images for example we can do an ecg and see what is the uh, conduction in the heart or you can see the uh, EEG how is the conduction in the central nervous system or you can uh, do the nerve conduction studies so you can have electrical information about various uh, structure how they're functioning and then you've got radiological investigation various type of x-rays CT scans and contrast studies can be done to see the internal structures we can go for sonological studies that is we can use ultrasound for studying uh, ultrasound can be the conventional ultrasound it can be modified ultrasound like the fibro scan which assesses the liver and you can have uh, another type of ultrasound which is called doppler ultrasound in which you can see the movement of or the flow of blood and then you can do an echo and see what is going on inside the heart and then you got magnetic imaging for example magnetic resonance imaging in which we can see various structures of the body and then so we can go for different type of molecular studies and we can do uh, uh, the nuclear studies in which a radionuclide material is used for imaging the body. So you can see we have different type of imaging investigation. So there are two main type of investigation. We go for a body specimen analysis or we go for the imaging studies. And sometimes we go for some functional studies as well. And then when we've got that data, to make a diagnosis the third step is cognitive workup that's we go for cognitive workup what is the cognitive workup is the interpretation of acquired data to achieve the logical conclusion through steps like a provisional diagnosis or a final diagnosis so this is the last step in making a diagnosis that you acquire the data you process that data in the mind and this can be used to make a diagnosis so this is logical interpretation of the data acquired this is called the cognitive domain of learning and this is usually done in the final years of uh, medical education and then treatment now the treatment can be medical treatment it can be surgical treatment now what are the main differences between uh, medical treatment and surgical treatment what happens in medical specialities medical specialties means for example uh, internal medicine you got uh, thoracic medicine the cardiac medicine or the renal medicine or the rheumatological medicine so what we do in this is that is the disturbed physiology or pathology it is treated with drugs or psychological support system so if the patient has 
disturbed physiology patient has disturbed psychology this is treated with medicine or psychological support system while in surgical specialties disturbed physiology or anatomy is corrected by alteration or correction in anatomy so you either alter the anatomy or you correct the anatomy the example of alteration in anatomy is for example if the patient has appendicitis we remove the appendix the correction of the anatomy is for example if the patient has obstruction in the intestine or a valvulus you remove that portion and reanastomose it or another example of this is that if there is occlusion in one of the arteries you can remove the clot and restore the anatomy so these are different surgical treatments so the medical treatments are the disturbed physiology or psychology is treated by medicines or psychological support system while in surgery it is the alteration or correction in the anatomy which is causing disturbed physiology or which is causing disease now the treatment is now changing very rapidly and there are mixing between surgeons and physicians a lot of instrumentation is available on the side of the physicians as well physician used to be conventionally called that they treat the patient with medicines but now there are many instruments available for physicians to work as well so the treatments are now actually uh, blurring a little bit and as we see in the future this might be uh, leading to more blurring between the physicians and surgeons although there are extreme ends that there some of the procedures can be done by surgeons and some of the treatments can be done by physicians only but you see as the technology is going to grow uh, this uh, demarcation is already becoming slightly blurred and it may blur further on